Lord, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now that's Psalms 119, 105. And that's a, that's a scripture that I've shared many times in my videos before, because it's a very important scripture, a scripture of direction, a scripture of guidance. The word of God turns on the light in our life. The word of God exposes sin in our life. The word of God gives us direction. The word of God gives us hope. The word of God is the answer to our prayers. And so let me ask you a question. Are you rooted in the word of God? Are you a person who, who believes and looks to the word of God for the answers in your life? Or are you a person of hype? Matthew chapter 7 starts off in verse 13 talking about wide is the path that leads to destruction and many are on it. You know, there's more people on the way to hell than there is going to heaven. And then it goes on to say that that, that narrow is the road that leads to life and few choose to walk that path. Then it goes on in verse 15 talking about beware of the false prophets that come to you dressed as sheep, but inwardly they are raving wolves. And then verse 20 in Matthew 7 goes on to say that you will know them by their fruits. Then Jesus in Matthew 7, 23 goes on and said, many in that day will come to me saying, Lord, Lord, haven't we done many mighty works in your name, cast out demons in your name? Didn't we go to church? Didn't we do all these great things? And he says, I will turn to you. Turn to them and say, depart from me, you who act wickedly, disregarding my commandments or disregarding his word. John 10, 27 says, my sheep, and there we go talking about the sheep again. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. See, are you a follower of the word of God? Is the word of God your direction? Verse 24 goes on to say, the man who built his house on the rock, being the wise man, the man who listened to the sayings and teachings of the word of God, and that when the storm came, that his house withstood that storm and stood afterward. But the man who built his house on the sand, see, if, you, if you're a person who, who builds your your faith who builds your walk with God on hype then when the storm comes in your life you will not withstand and you'll fall into sin and get into all these silly things because you're not in the word of God see I'm an end times person I've always been I've always been fascinated with the end times I've always been fascinated with the Lord's return and the rapture since I was a little kid but we must be in the word of God because looking for the rapture to come and watching rapture videos, that will not give us strength in the Lord. You know, John 1 14 says that the word dwelt among us and was made flesh. And we know that's Jesus. Jesus is the word made flesh. He's the living word of God. He's the breathing word of God. I mean, Hebrews 4 12 tells us that the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. We know Jesus is the living word and the word of God is our direction. If we want backbone in our faith, if we want strength to stay out of sin, we get that through the word of God. We get that by reading the word of God. We get that by meditating on his word day and night, just as Psalms one, uh, Psalms chapter one, verse uh, two tells us that the man who meditates on his word day and night will be like a tree planted by the rivers whose roots go down deep. And when the drought comes, his leaf will not wither. See, when we get in the word of God, and, and it even goes along with Ephesians chapter three, verse 16 through 21, it talks about us growing our roots deep in the love of Christ. See, when we get in the word, we get strength. We get led by the spirit of God himself. The Holy Spirit leads us. And as Galatians tells us to, 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 be, to be those who walk in the spirit and not led by the flesh, 
not led by our fleshly desires. See, the word of God directs us out of sin. And many times it's the same people who do not want to read and get in the word of God who fall into sin. And actually, I would say 100% of the time, it's those same people. You know, it's hard enough when we're in the word of God to stay out of sin. It's hard enough when we're in the word. But how much more easier is it when we're not in the word? I mean, you're easy pickings for the devil. You know, the Bible tells us in James 4, 7, it says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from us. Or if we're not in the word of God, how can we be submitted to God if we're not reading his word? And if we're not being like that man who meditates on the word day and night, and the Bible tells us that man is like a tree planted by the rivers whose roots go down deep. You will be strong if you get rooted in the word of God. You know, the challenges of life will come. It, they, they can come at your workplace. They can come in your marriage. They can come in your health. They can come in your family members. They can come, they can come in so many multiple different places. And what's going to be your strength when that day comes? You know, when Jesus was being tempted by the devil 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus spoke the word and spoke the word and spoke the word. The word of God is our strength. Even Jesus himself had to stand on the word. So if Jesus stood on the word, who do we think we are to think that we don't have to stand on the word? Of course, we must stand on the word. Of course, we must speak the word out of God out of our mouth. We must be people of the word of God. You know, last week in my video, I brought up about what group were we part of? Are we part of the we part of the 380 that disregarded Jesus' word to, to go to the upper room and wait? Are we part of the 120? You know, the 380 was just all about hype, all about the party, all about wanting to see, you know, one about to get the, the hair standing up on their on their arms. They were about hype. But the 120 was about obedience and following after Christ. Jesus says to the very first disciples, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. The man who built his house on the rock, Jesus says he's the wise man because he obeyed his teachings. The parable of the 10 virgins. Well, five obeyed, five disobeyed. Then the talents. You had the disobedient servant who just did not obey the word of God. See, the Lord's looking for our obedience. Ephesians chapter five talks about not making excuses for our sins, for our sexual sins, not making excuses. You know, the Bible tells us that the devil is the father of all lies. But I like to say that excuses is the mother of lies. You know, Jesus didn't come to free us to sin. He came to free us from sin. And so let's not make excuses to sin more. Let the word of God turn on the light in our life and expose our sins so we can get out of them, not stay in them. That's what the word of God does. It turns on the light. And when you turn on the light, darkness goes away. Let the word of God in your life. Read the word of God. Pray and get believers who believe in the word of God and stand on the word of God and let them in your life. Because typically when we don't let people who are in the word of God in our life, we're doing that because we don't want sin exposed in our life. So that's my video tonight. Uh, you know what? Actually, I want to share one more thing in Acts chapter 19. Uh, there was a team of Jews. That were going casting out demons. But then they came against this one man who was possessed. And they said, in the name of Jesus, the same Jesus that Paul preaches, come out of this man. And then verse 15 tells us that the demon spoke back out of this man and said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? And after that, this demon leaped on this team of Jews, beat them badly in the streets and stripped them naked and embarrassed them and injured them. See, if you're not submitted to God, even the demons and devils know that you're a fake, that you're a phony, that you're not in, in that you're not in the word of God and that you're not submitted to the word of God. As James chapter four, verse seven tells us, submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. 
See, this team of Jews, they were not submitted to God because they got their butts beat and whipped by the devil. Are you being whipped and beat by the devil? Get into the word of God and submit to the word of God. And I'll leave you with this. Revelation 3.19. It says that if you are the Lord's, Revelation 3.19, if you are the Lord's, then he will chasten you. He will rebuke you. He will tell you of your wrongs. Then it says, but be zealous and repent. Allow the word of God to turn on the light in your life. The Bible tells us that we've been called out of darkness into his glorious light. Allow the word of God to turn on the light in your life. Well, that's my video tonight. Until next time, God bless you and have a good night.